I go to a 7-Eleven, typically I'm going to get Mini Mart item or get fuel, but tonight I'm taking the C8Z06 to 7-Eleven for not that. We're going to car meet at 7-Eleven. So it's a nighttime car meet at 7-Eleven. Some group is putting it on. Don't know who this group is. Just seen them online because a friend with an R8 sent it to me. So if he sent it to me, then it probably should be cool. I love 7-Eleven, especially because of all my trips to Japan. It's like my favorite Mini Mart to go to out there because it is so nice. The food is great in Japan, all that stuff. The one in the US, I think they're working on bringing some of that Japanness to the US stores, but they haven't done it yet. Eventually they will, and that's gonna be super cool. But right now, I'm heading to 7-Eleven Night Meet. Should be fun, should be cool. Hopefully I get to see a lot of cool cars there. We'll find out. Now, while on my way there, I wanna give y'all a quick update on my 32,000 mile update. I've had this car since December of 2022. The car actually was able for me. I could actually go get it in uh, November 2022, but I couldn't until December because of uh, just a bunch of like just scheduling reasons couldn't make it happen. But yeah, I've had this car for a little while now, just under two years. This has been 34, so it's the 34th one off the line production wise. The car has been really solid. I haven't, I haven't had any major issues, but I have had a couple little issues. Nothing with the motor. Motor has been absolutely stout, has been absolutely perfect. We'll go down the line of a couple of the issues, then I'll talk about all the greatness because this car overall, to give this car a 10 out of 10, this car is amazing. Now there's a few things that have happened, so like I can't like hide it. I always suggest to everybody to do DCT filter changes every time you do your oil change. And I suggest every 5,000 miles or less, do your oil change and a DCT filter change. This will help keep from the DCT filter getting clogged or whatever. I don't know the mechanics and engineering behind it. All I know is just, it's, I believe it's safer to do it that way so you don't have any issues. My transmission has been pretty good for the most part. I did have a couple codes come on throughout the life, short life so far of this car. And those codes required me to go to the dealership. And when I went to the dealership, they, they had to change parts. <laughs> in the trans, not necessarily in the trans, but it was like some of the modules and things like that. I, and I don't know, maybe it is in, in the trans or on the outside of trans, I don't know. But nothing's ever happened where I was left stranded somewhere. Nothing ever happened where I was leaking fluid or anything like that. These things just happen because for whatever reason, I believe there was like a recall on a certain a certain type of modules or whatever. I had one installed for my car for whatever reason. We had to do it earlier in the life of this car. And then that, whatever got installed wasn't the right part. So they had to go back and change it. Um, I didn't have issues with it until I had an issue. <laughs> and the issue was just a code. It came up and it said that take it to a dealership. I can't remember exactly what the code is. If I wasn't driving, I'd be able to look it up and show you exactly. Well, that did happen. Anyways, those two times I had those little minor issues, that got corrected. No worries, no issues. I wasn't stranded anywhere. The car wasn't feeling weird. It really didn't feel weird at all. The car felt normal, but the code did pop up. So I was like, well, I don't want it to get worse. So I just went into a dealership and had the issues fixed. And they fixed it. Under warranty, no issues. Keep going along a merry day. Besides that, like everything else has been really solid with the car. I've gone through some tires for sure, obviously because I've you know I've tracked the car and uh, by tracking it, you're definitely putting a lot of wear and tear on tires. So I started off tracking my PS4s and they're good tires for, I would say majority of people out there, they're probably good tires for tracking. For me, when I'm trying to get the most out of the car, I need a stickier tire. Pilot Cup 2Rs are ridiculously sticky and great for like one or two laps or three. <laughs> they're great for one day, but that's it and then they're worn out, tore up, whatever, you can't use them anymore. So for me, I didn't want to go spend that kind of money on those kind of tires to only use them for one track day. Then I found a happy medium with some Goodyears. They were the Goodyear, the Goodyear supercar or something. I gotta look it up. I'll do a whole video on the tires I, I use. So anyways, use that for this car and it's been great. The sizing wasn't completely perfect, but it was what I could find at that time. Used it and the grip was great. Definitely gave me great grip for a long time. I was able to use those tires for like four or five track, five track days. I think and um, it was great it was good so definitely suggest that and yeah I'll do, do a video on tires and stuff at some point I do plan on switching to another tire once the company that I'm switching to comes out with a particular tire that works for my size wheel or I'll have to convert to a 19 inch wheel but I can't do 19 inch because I have these big carbon ceramic brakes actually you know what I can do 19 inch there is a way forged light forged light so f-o-r-g-e-d light l-i-t-e all one word you can buy forged light wheels from my website, jessebgperformance.com. We actually do have a 19 inch that works with these carpet ceramic brakes. I completely forgot about that. And yeah, you can use it. Some people are using it for drag wheels or using it for whatever they want. So I probably will have to make a switch to 19 inch at some point so that I can maximize the amount of tires that are out there. Yeah, so maintenance, you know, 
oil changes and DCT filter change, you'll be golden. Issues besides that, I know some other people have had other issues like motor issues and this and that, but most of these cars should be still under warranty, so just go in and get that change. Do your maintenance, don't wait forever. Don't do the maintenance yourself because you probably don't know how to do it properly and then you might put yourself in a bind. When you drive these cars, you know, make sure you let, let them warm up before you go hard with them. And don't just turn them on and fire away. You know, let them warm up properly. Let the fluids come up to temp, your water temps, oil temps, trans temps, all that stuff. Make, make sure they come up to temp before you really start railing on it. I've not really done track days in the summer in this car, although this car does a really good job of staying cool. As far as the motor and stuff, I haven't done a track day in the summer just because, not because I don't think the car will make it, I don't think tires will make it. <laughs> so nothing in that kind of heat just yet, especially with where we're living, 100 plus degrees at these tracks during the summer. It, it's just no point. You're not going to run any fast laps. And then to me, it's just not worth it. Besides that though, 32,000 miles into this car, it's been really great. I have the E-Ray as well. Now, the E-Ray is actually about 5,000 miles right now. I got to do some more content on that pretty soon. Some people want me to do comparison between the E-Ray and this. They're not really comparable. They're two separate cars, two different cars, nothing alike. The E-Ray is an absolute dig monster, really torquey. It's great. The Z06 also has plenty of power and has great torque as well and is quick and is lighter. So that helps all the vehicles. They all have their ups and downs on what's good and what's better. They're both great cars to have. I wouldn't trade an E-Ray for a Z06 and vice versa. I would say like they're just two different cars. It just depends what you want. If you want a particular thing, one car will give it to you really well. If you want another thing, the other car will give it to you really well. So, but overall, both of those are great cars. Can't wait till the ZR1 comes out. We'd love to have that. Those things are gonna be monsters with over a thousand horsepower. Definitely gonna be a mid to low nine second car in a quarter mile. I can't wait to see the Nürburgring time. I believe that car will most likely run somewhere in the six minute, 40 second range, somewhere there. I don't know exactly where, but it'll run somewhere in that range. It's making plenty of downforce, plenty of power, plenty of sticky tire. I think it's gonna be able to do well. And then after that, you know, the Zora, and then after that, the C9. The C9 Corvettes will come out probably in the next five years, I'm guessing, I would hope so. Overall though, once again, C8 Z06 has been amazing. And uh, yeah, on to this meet so that uh, you can see what a 7-Eleven night meet is about. So just got here to the 7-Eleven me. This thing is popping. I did not realize it's gonna be like this. So many cars here. <laughs> this is crazy. Like I knew it was gonna be a decent amount of cars, but like my mind really couldn't wrap around. Like, I mean, literally we just packed out an entire 7-Eleven. Like this is nuts. Like, <laughs> Thank you 7-Eleven for allowing us to have a car meet at 7-Eleven. This is freaking crazy. Absolutely crazy. <laughs>
another route Always had a way to make it work and find another route Always had a way to make it work and find another route Always had a way to make it work and find another route Always had a way to make it work and find another route This meet is absolutely crazy. I didn't realize there were gonna be this many cars that came to it. Right now, some cars revving on the other side of the lot because it's super packed here. They're probably trying to make flames happen, I don't know. But, and now it's a V6 Mustang trying to rev. Anyways, this be super cool. A lot of really great cars here, as you can see, a lot of fun stuff. This is probably one of the coolest settings for a meet, you know, being able to come to like a 7-Eleven, be able to have a meet here at a 7-Eleven. Nice lighting, it's a brand new 7-Eleven. The owner of the 7-Eleven is the one that's actually putting it on. It's not like some other organizer came in and put the meet on, like this 7-Eleven owner is like, hey, I like cars and we just opened up and I wanna get, you know, cool cars here and cool people here so they can know that we're open. So now everybody knows that this 7-Eleven is open. So very smart business tactic by the guy who opened this place up super smart on him i love that he's a car guy and i love that he's putting it on hopefully everybody here respects the meat respects the property so that he can have more of these he wants to have like at least once one a month i definitely will come to him for sure it's only like 20 minutes away from me but um this is cool 7-eleven is awesome and you know being able to have these cool car meets here that actually organized meet is not like some pop-up like random like illegal one or whatever it's like legal like it's his property his shop his gas station and he's putting on this meet so very very cool to be able to have the opportunity to come to something like this here and see all these great cars.
right, man. It's been really fun here. Being able to, uh, cars are leaving, so it's gonna get pretty loud. But yeah, it's been super fun coming to this meet here at 7-Eleven. I wish I could kind of talk a lot instead of just only showing you all the cars. I wish I could talk about the cars, but there's loud music going on. Trying to talk over that's like impossible because it's like super loud and like all in your face right there, but it's all good. Still, it was really cool getting to come out here and experience this. Glad I got to give you all a 32,000 mile update on what's going on with the car and how it's been for the last 32,000 miles. Yeah, tonight was cool. It's cool. It's nice to get out every once in a while and check out some cool meets and unique places. Never been to one at 7-Eleven, so it was really awesome to get to come out here to this one. But anyways, it's been good. It's been good. Thanks for everyone tuning in and catch you on the next video. Maybe I'll have some more clips after this. Maybe I won't. I don't know. Find out. All right, but before we go home, first, I gotta get some food. In and out, you know what it is. <laughs>